Milwaukee 16 inch chainsaw. Is it right for you? This Milwaukee M18 fuel chainsaw runs a brushless motor, obviously from the fuel designation, and with a 12 amp hour battery, it's said to cut 150 cuts in 6x6 cedar. We won't be testing that, but we'll put it to some real world use. But first, let's dive into the details and the features of this saw. We'll take it out and use it, and then come back and talk about pricing warranty and what we thought of it. This is the Milwaukee model number 2727 and it's the M18 Fuel 16 inch chainsaw. You can also get this in the 14 inch bar and chain as far as the body of the saw, that's all identical. All the performance will, will be identical as well. Maybe a little less drag on a 14 inch bar and chain, but for the most part, everything is the same and definitely the same body. Now you can get this as a kit and with the kit, you will get the 12.0 high output HD battery as well as the M18 M12 rapid charger as well. So an upgraded charger uh, for faster charging, especially for these high output, larger capacity batteries. I do recommend buying the kit when you buy this chainsaw. You're gonna save money. Uh, these are very expensive batteries, so you're gonna save a little bit of money if you buy it as a kit. But obviously, if you already have some 12.0 batteries, uh, then definitely you can save a little bit of money and, and buy uh, the bare tool model, which would be a dash 20 versus the 20 dash 21 HD. So the model number 2727 dash 21 HD will be the kit with the rapid charger and with the HD 12.0 battery. We'll cover pricing in just one moment. Now let's take a look at some of the features on this saw. First, as we mentioned, obviously we get a 16 inch bar and chain, which is going to give us probably a usable bar of probably about 15 inches. So yeah, with those bucking spikes, yeah, so it looks like 14 and three quarter inches to the tip of the bar and about right at 15 inches to the tip of the chain. So that's what usable uh, bar and chain you're gonna get is about 15 inches on that 16 inch bar and chain. Now, as far as the length of the overall tool itself or the overall chainsaw, it's rather long. As you can see, it's kind of getting off camera here. And you're looking at about 33 inches from tip to tail uh, with the 16 inch bar on here. So not a short chainsaw, but I do not have a problem with that at all. Th this is a saw that's meant for doing some limbing, meant for doing some, some cleanup, not a little top handle saw with a short, short you know, bar and chain where you want it really compact. This is meant to be a rear handle, long saw. So again, not gonna count anything off for it being 33 inches long. That makes it a lot easier to handle, especially when you're cutting larger limbs. Now we have a pretty typical uh, chain break here on the saw. Push it forward, that's gonna lock the chain into place. Pull it back, that's gonna release that. And we'll look at how that's all happening right here under the cover in just one moment. I really like the fact that we get a double nut, double stud uh, bar retention. Um, that's typical on your you know, more pro saws and starting to become more typical on the battery powered as well, but a lot of them have either a single retention or kind of an automatic adjuster, which I really don't care for because it doesn't retain uh, that retention on these chains, on these bars when you're cutting into large stuff. So I love to see that we've, we've got a double nut there and then we have obviously the, uh, the, the tensioner right back here. So you're gonna loosen these two nuts up and then you're gonna use the tensioner to tighten up that chain. Again, we'll cover that in a moment as well. Back here on the other side, uh, we do get some uh, metal or steel bucking spikes. Um, I like that. If you're going to put bucking spikes on a saw, then I like the metal. I think the plastic ones are a joke. Um, so anyway, like to see that. We do have some there. Now you can see right here on the base of the bar is all your markings on this size of this bar and the size of the chain as well. It tells us we have a 16 inch bar. Also that it's an 043 pitch chain and it's also a 56 link chain. So that tells you your sizing when uh, you want to replace this. Now, as far as chain speed and performance, that's something I definitely want to get into. Uh, but while we do that, or maybe before we do that, let's take the cover off of this and have a look. <laughs> Typical half inch nuts here. So I could take my scrunch, which by the way, that's another good point. Uh, buried under the saw here, I shouldn't say buried under it, but underneath the saw is the actual scrunch and 
takes a little bit of force to get that out because there is a metal retainer right there that holds this into place, which is great because the last thing you want is your scrunch just falling out um, when you're cutting on something or when you're done working. So I'll leave that out for a moment and we'll take this cover right off. So once the two bar retention nuts are off, very easy to pull that cover off. And then let's go ahead and pull this blade off, which by the way, make sure you don't have a battery in here when you're doing this. Pretty typical bar and chain placement and assembly here. So it basically goes around the, around the sprocket and, and then put this over the studs. And then the tensioner goes through one of these holes, which is a good time to point out every few times that you use the saw, maybe every couple of times, flip the bar over. Now, when you do that, make sure you turn your chain around as well. Make sure it's cutting in the right, in the right place because these two holes right here, if they look rather symmetrical, well, they are because most of your bars are made to flip over. Now, what you have going on here on the top is the oiler. So you can see this oval here. That's where the oil actually comes out of the oil retention tank and actually oils this bar and oils the chain. It actually dumps into this hole, goes into this bar, and then this chain actually sweeps us all the way around this bar and then usually slings all the oil out somewhere down here with most of your chainsaw dust as well. But when you flip it over, then the top one becomes the, then this one becomes the oiler up here. And then the bottom one then becomes uh, the tensioner or the spike right there or the stud that actually handles all the tensioning. So these are meant to be flipped upside down and continue doing that over the life of the saw and it'll keep from wearing out one side or the other. Also something I wanted to point out, this has a six tooth sprocket on it. We've already counted them, but trust me, it's, it's got six teeth and that's gonna come in handy here in just one moment to know that. So I'm gonna take my chain, put it around my sprocket and then I wanna tuck the bar, make sure it's underneath that washer and now make sure the chain is in my bar, especially if it was tensioned properly, because now it's got to go over that tensioning stud right there. And now I can put my cover on, but make sure that this bar is over that tensioning stud before you try to put your cover on or it's not going to line up. Now, once we got that on there, and one more thing before we get this on, right here, you see this band around this clutch. By the way, that's the clutch bell. And that little band around that clutch right there, that's what activates the brake. So right now the brake is not on. And you can see I can, I can turn that by hand and that chain moves. Now if I engage this, you'll see that band tighten up. So now that band is tight on that drum and now I cannot move this chain because it's locked into place. So we have a manual blade lock that's locking that into place. And before I put too much tension on there, I'm going to check the tension. And usually I want to see just the top of the tooth. And I know on a brand new blade, that's going to stretch rather quickly. So I'm going to give it another eighth turn or so. Tighten that up just a touch more. And now I can tighten up the retention nut and replace my scrunch. Now real quick, I'm gonna throw a battery in here. Don't recommend you running this on your bench, but I'm just gonna pull the trigger. So right now I'm pulling the trigger and nothing's happening. Well, that's because our chain brake is on. It's doing what it's supposed to do, which by the way, it doesn't even act like that it's uh, trying to engage that chain. So. I'm imagining there's probably an electric cutout on that chain brake as well as that manual chain brake. So now the chain brake is off. There's no other electronic buttons I have to push. As long as I push my trigger lock here, that will engage the trigger. So you see right now my trigger is locked out, but as soon as I push this, our blade will be live. Very quick acting blade on this Milwaukee chainsaw. So that is a great feature. At the same time, it's something you need to be very careful of because a running chainsaw, a gas running chainsaw, usually you hear it sitting there running. You always hear it sitting there running, so you know it's live. Well, on an electric chainsaw or a battery powered chainsaw, you don't hear it running, but this is actually ready to go. That chain breaks off. All you gotta do is pull that trigger, and in about one second, you're up to 
6,000 plus RPM on that chain. Now, one thing I like to know is chain speed when I'm looking at a chainsaw. And usually the manufacturer will give an RPM or they'll give a chain speed of feet per minute, feet per second, meters per second, meters per minute, something like that. Well, Milwaukee claims 6,600 RPM. Now, on the website, that's all I could find. But if you open up the manual, if you open up the manual, they also give a feet per minute. So 2,400 and 40 feet per minute. Well, I wanted to kind of check their math and see if it actually worked out. So let's do that rather quickly. So if we need to get 6,600 RPM to feet per minute, then we need to know how far does the chain travel in each RPM. And we can do that because we know this is a six tooth sprocket. So we have six teeth. So how far in one revolution will six teeth actually travel that chain and there's an easy way to find that let's battery out and pull our chain over here and let's have a look at this and if i pull this down you'll see that there's a tooth every other rivet there so we have a, a tooth here and then one two and another tooth and one two and another tooth so we know that every two rivets there's a tooth so if we say okay if there's a tooth here there's another one here there's another one here here, here, and here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a six tooth sprocket, but yet we have six teeth and that'll be kind of seven spaces, if you will, because we want to measure from the start of the first tooth to the end of the sixth tooth. And so that's that far. Okay, if we take, looks like right at 4.44 inches. So if we take 4.44 inches and we multiply times that 6600 rpm so if we take 6600 times 4.44 that gives us 29,304 but that gives us inches per minute so let's just divide that by 12 and that's 24 42 feet per minute. They claim 2440. We came up with 2442. I would say that's in the ballpark. So if they're right on either one of these, then the other number's definitely checking out. I just like to look at those things and, and figure out where the chain speed is. And by the way, a lot of times you'll see that in feet per second. So if you want to take that even further, we can take the 2442 and we can divide by 60 and that gives us 40.7 feet per second. So there's your feet per second and there is your feet per minute. Now this log here is eight and three quarter inches on the widest part and seven and three quarter on the narrow. So we're gonna call that eight and a half. I think splitting the difference on this oval uh, will be very fair and we'll make some cuts on this. And this is Florida oak that was just dropped a couple of days ago. So still, plenty of moisture left in this tons of it and you'll see once we make a couple of cuts again that one's a couple of days old but once we make some cuts you'll see it's nice and wet in there so let's make some cuts but before we do so very important on any saw get some oil in here and if you say tim what kind of barn chain oil do you like to use and i say anything use motor oil works great i'm sure many will disagree with me but anyway, we've got barn chain oil in there now. Nice translucent tank where we can actually see the level to make sure that we've got oil in there. So you can see that sloshing around now. And let's make a couple of cuts. Make sure our chain brakes on. Put our battery in. Want to run this blade for a few seconds to get the oil in there. And by the way, you can probably see it slinging out uh, once you do that. So if you pull the trigger, you can see that wet spot right there of the oil. We know that we're now lubricating that chain and we can go to cutting. That's where those bucking spikes come in handy where I can actually, I can start my cut. 
and that's where now I can get those teeth in there and just use that for leverage. And just walk that blade down. It takes a lot less effort than you actually trying to push down with one hand. By the way, there you see the face of my first cut. There's the back side, or there's the back side of, the, of that face cut. You can see the moisture still in that. The deeper we get, the more moisture we have in there. So still plenty of moisture left in this old Florida oak. And you'll see that I'm really not taking it easy on this saw. I'm really trying to bury the blade, not hard. Can I stop it? Sure, let's do that. So yes, I can stop this saw pretty, you know, without a whole bunch of effort, but that's gonna be really on probably about any battery powered saw, but I still can put a good amount of I can still put a good amount of force on this to enhance that cut and to get bigger chunks while I'm cutting. And then something that's pretty stressful on a saw is to be able to plunge this. So let's see. Now we've cut 20 of these eight and a half inch cookies and buried the blade twice and we're still, we still have three bars left on our battery. So still got a bunch of cuts left in this thing. Yes, they claim, uh, you know, hundred cuts and six by six cedar or something like that. I could care less about looking at cedar, but I do want to know typical, you know, yard cleanup, storm cleanup, how many cuts am I going to be, you know, can I take down a tree on a couple of batteries and be able to cut it up? And I would say, yes, I think, I think you're going to take down that tree on one battery and limit up and then, you know, finish cutting everything up on that second battery and you're going to be good to go. So remember when I mentioned that initially I'm going to tighten the chain a little bit tighter than I typically would because it's brand new, it's going to stretch. You can see, let me remove this battery of the sag down here in this chain. I have not tightened up this chain since I initially did it and then we made these 31 cuts here. So you can see the sag in this without me pulling on it at all of how much it's stretched over those few cuts. So very important again to tighten that chain a little tighter initially. And then I would say after 10 cuts or so, go ahead and set that tension once more, and then you should be good to go. It shouldn't stretch that often that far from then on. Make sure you have oil in the tank and make sure you're flipping your bar every few times that you use the saw, and that will extend the life of your bar, extend the life of your chain as well. And by the way, learn to sharpen your chain as well. Yes, you can buy these for about 20 bucks, 
to buy uh, new chains. A new chain and bar is probably going to cost you in the $40 range. Uh, but if you'll learn to sharpen these, it's pretty quick to do. You can set it up in your vise and get those taken care of rather quickly. Performance in this thing is, is pretty impressive, especially for the fact that this is not a brand new saw. This has been out a couple of years now. Still performs very well. And by the way, we made these 31 cuts, same battery, and we're still at three out of four bars remaining in this battery. Now, you're not gonna take this all the way down to say one bar. You're gonna start noticing that degradation in power once it drops off below that, you know, probably 40, 50%. And then I would recommend switching out that battery, but you're definitely gonna get a good 50 cuts in something like this eight inch oak before it dies. Now pricing on this saw is $329 for the bare tool. So if you get the 2727-20, it's gonna run you 329. And if you get the kit with the 12 amp hour battery and the rapid charger in the 16 inch format, it's gonna run you about 449. Now I, as I mentioned earlier, would definitely recommend buying the kit because you're getting this battery that typically is gonna cost you uh, at least 200 bucks just for the battery. So you're getting a battery and the rapid charger for another 100 and so, some odd dollars um, from the bare tool price. So definitely recommend the kit price, but again, if you've got a, a slew of 12 amp hour batteries, then go ahead. And another word of caution, do not run your five amp hour batteries that you're running in your drills and impact drivers and impact wrenches in this saw. You're just not gonna be happy. It needs a high output, high demand battery. So like your 8.0s and 12.0s, and I definitely recommend running a 12.0 in this. Again, you're just not gonna be as happy as when you run this saw with the correct battery. So check it out for yourselves. Also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, well, give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day. Keep smiling.